Welcome to The Lost Signals Discusses Film and TV. Using the revolutionary Manzor Mosi Thurlow scale, or MONS, we scrupulously review these art forms with an emphasis on narrative structure. Join us for another entertaining episode. Hello there, and welcome back to Lost Signals Discusses and Reviews Film and Television. And we are headshots galore tonight. We are doing John Wick 3 Power Bellum. I'm your host, Scott Thurlow. I'm here with my fellow uh, assassins, Rich Perry, <laughs> Stephen Amosi, Hello. And Chris Morgan. Well, hi, I'm. And uh, I believe, Rich, you've got the uh, start us off with the log line, please. Yeah, John Wick 3, getting wiki with it. Getting wiki with it, <laughs> indeed. And uh, also, please tell us about the plot, sir. So, John is at it again. <laughs> On the run for his life, killing a bunch of mofos. Mm-hmm. So this time, he is trying to make it to... Uh, Trying to make his way to Morocco in order to come up with a plan to get him. Sort of get him back get, in the yeah. good graces, we'll get, guess we'll Get say. back in the good graces of the high table. Hmm. Eventually meets with the one above the table and is given an opportunity to clean his record and basically start working again in the life. But at the last second decides <laughs> not to and ends up making even more enemies if he thought that was possible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and teams up with a now believed dead Bowery King and is plotting his revenge against the high table and everybody. Anybody else who might come against him. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. That, that is like the, you hit every mark in that plot. I'm like, wow, this is a lot. (laughs) Yep. That's pretty much what happens uh, for sure. And yeah, so like, I guess we'll be clear, like obviously a spoilers, I guess we don't say that often, but so this is the third entry in the, the new modern uh, franchise of John Wick. So I guess if we're talking about like the plot itself, it, it's gonna be like your mileage may vary like you we're all fans but like rich and i are pretty big fans and chris you might be like a little bit behind that Sivo, you're probably like the least like invested in this franchise but if you're if you are yeah it's a, a great follow-up a great third entry in the series and uh so given that like the cool thing to me is that each one like picks up like literally like exactly when the last one drops mm-hmm. so i like that part of it and i said to i said something like this to you rich like precast that I believe I assess two and three, this one, like about equal. I like them pretty much the same. I think there's some things that were cooler and well done, better done, let's say, in two and vice versa for three. So, like, I don't know how else to give it but but a two. Like, it's not a one plot. I don't think it's like a perfect plot either. But for what it is and for what this um, storyline has been following, I think it's a very solid two, like overall. Just for the record... I'm the one who recommended John Wick 1 to you, motherfucker. Yes, but I, it, like I said, I, it's funny, Chris, because I think I got more into it like after that. Yes, yeah. for sure. You like John Wick 2 you, better you than did, I did. You yeah. did recommend it to me. You did suggest it, and I'll give you credit on that, my friend. But I'm just saying, like, like plot-wise, story-wise, it's very solid. I think it's a very, like, natural, like, three-act structure, like, pretty solid. There's not much... I hate the phrase it this way. Not that there's not much to it, but it, it is what it is, and I hate that phrase, too. But for what it's trying to do, it's fucking perfectly fine, 100%. I think there are other aspects to it that I think I'll give more credit to, but just in terms of the narrative story, I think it lies somewhere around a solid two for me. Sure. What do you guys think? I think that this film is so much popcorn, like it's just a good summer movie, I guess, and Mm -hmm. and, uh, there is something a little bit deeper to it than your very average, you know, standard sure. action. It's a better than average action. Like, I oh. prefer it to say the expendables or <laughs> something like that. But um I think a lot of that is down to style and uh stylistic choices hmm. and like, choreography and things like that. But um in terms of plot, it's fairly straightforward with a little bit of like this um kind of weird almost urban fantasy feel to the, like the this uh conglomerate that kind of runs the world hmm. and i do like that um you know the, 
I say urban fantasy. There's not really any like fantasy elements. There's nothing supernatural. It, I mean, it's, it's hyper for the real. fact that John Wick kills, uh, you know, five thousand people without <laughs> fucking. You sure. know, also, he's not dead himself. yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but <clears throat> it's it's just a fun like turn your fucking brain off action movie and yeah it's i i will say like you you did the plot pretty good service there there was like a section where he fights with holly berry to uh figure out where he's supposed to go next like there's some um as you said earlier scott connective tissue Hmm. to this movie but like yeah i mean i think you hit the main plot points on the head and it's nothing like wildly inventive or anything like that but it's decently done give it a two yeah if i'm if actually follow suit i actually have a hard time with these movies trying to like quantify what the plot sits as mm-hmm. yeah because yeah, the, chore- the choreography itself like tells a story beyond like what the dialogue and like the actions of the characters does sure and mm, i agree i know like with the at least with the with this series, I've always just like measured it by how invested I was as to what kind of score I would get the plot. And with that, I would have to give it a three because I was never at one point taken out of the movie. Mm. And even if there was like a chance for me to start slipping, they'd be like, hey, hey, headshots. Yeah. <laughs> just sure. brought right back I'll in. I get you back in. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I get it. Like, yeah. I, I, I see, like, it's funny because like I was almost on the cusp of like maybe giving a three but it's saying like it's tough because i don't want to like have it be a mark against the film like yes it's a popcorn action flick but as you said steve like sort of smarter slash better than average and yeah like a lot of it as you mentioned rich is going to go to choreography like style like is always like one of the highlights of of at least this franchise so a lot of credit like whatever credit i guess i'm taking away here on plot is putting in yeah i'll probably shit back there but I could almost see, but I, I just don't think it deserves a full three, but certainly a, da- a damn solid, yeah. like a nice two. I mean, you, well, you almost got me to give it a two. <laughs> well, I, I'm actually, I don't really consider it like a mindless action flick because it is such a rich world. I mean, the first thing about the first John Wick, and I, I, to me, it's a damn near perfect movie because the studio offered that up in February. I mean, they weren't expecting this film to do shit sure the i mean it's really you know like january february where you're saying like they almost like wrote it off like "Ah, yeah whatever that's where films go to die and i went to see this Mm -hmm. thing and i thought john wick this was like a great movie there's a lot of really great character stuff i mean it was a a very character driven movie the action was a sideline to it i was i was pretty I'm pretty sure that a lot of people were just like, this movie's not going to do anything. I was one of those people. Yeah, yeah. I, me <laughs> too. I mean, I, I was, it was, it was It was a rainy day. The movie was there. Mm-hmm. I was like, Let, let's watch it. Well, I, my friend and I just decided to go see it on a Tuesday night randomly. Um, but um, yeah, so, but you know, the last film, they went a little James Bond and they went a little heavier mm. into the action. In this film, um, the first two thirds, I thought they really... Some the, some of the fight scenes are great. We'll talk about that when we get to style. But I thought they did a really good job to continue the world building. I felt sure. like I felt like they kind of got more into James Bond last time. They kind of brought it back, which I really liked, and I love the whole trip to Morocco. But we get to the third act when he comes back, and then uh, about the time we got when when they were going to the Continental and we had the whole um, thing where the uh, the um, uh, the more, not the Marines, but the um, the high table like uh, uh, operatives. Yeah. The operatives, yeah, you know, when Blackwater came in, yeah. and uh, <laughs> um, that's where the film started losing me. I was just like, oh my god, what they really should have been would was um, Zero and his two men have that have been the Continental fight. That I mean, would, it was, but it was no, like but, after that. But yeah, the I thing know what is, you mean, yeah. I was more invested in that. Sure. Than a bunch of random, you random know, mooks, straw, essentially. Yeah, yeah sure. straw, bit, like have maybe have a. It turns out that. He has a lot more students hidden in New York than like just those six yeah. they showed in the whole movie. Yeah, uh, but what I'm yeah. saying is that's where the, I it mean, becomes a, a legitimate like ninja fight. Mm. <laughs> but that's why I'm I, I'm definitely going to give it a two as well. Okay, um, because you know it did lose me. I was kind of like sitting there. I was like I was getting fatigued from it because what the strengths of the first film was the character and the world, and the strengths of the first act in the first two acts in this were the characters in the world. Sure. And, and by the way, I didn't. There's two things I didn't buy at the end. Number one, I knew right away that um, uh, uh, Winston was going to betray him. 
in which to me Sam seemed ah uh, I can't, I'm I might but, push back on that but, but you go ahead first whether he did or not actually whether he did or not we'll find out in the next film I feel like it was the Xenatos Gambit essentially because, because I was kind of wondering about that until until um until the whole scene with um. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne at the end. Sure, but you know, but when, but when he was went off the building and he hit to, uh, to um, fire escapes and then landed <laughs> on the street, I'm like, all right, come on, man, this is this is kind of getting into a little bit of farce. John Wick, well, like I knew, I, I knew it wasn't a full betrayal because he made sure to shoot him in his suit. Yeah, That's yeah. Kind of so like, I feel like I feel like like they, he knew that. Yeah. Like he was trying, he basically was trying to play the high table, like the adjudicator. Right, he's like, oh yeah, so I'll take care of Wick and like, wink, wink. Like, I know John yeah. didn't like, survive. Yeah. Wink, wink. Shoot. Yes, I know he'll survive. And I, and I thought, and I thought that, and John I thought Wick. that too. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought that too. <laughs> but when, but when at the end, where I feel like it was an unspoken agreement between them. Like, if I did sense. too, until we get to the end where he's um, under the table, and I'm like, all right, is he talking? But the, see, maybe that's the one for the fourth. Is he really talking about Winston? I mean, you know, so. Sure, maybe it's a bit of an open question, but yeah, I, I so, see. Right, the more we're talking about, about it, I, I'm giving that one a little bit of a pass. I'm still sticking with my two of them. Sure, that's fair. All right, so let's move on then to themes, and that'll be you, Steve-O. Um, yeah, so... Uh, Gunfights are awesome. Revenge? Consequence. <laughs> uh, you know, there's, there's like some themes of like loyalty... Mm. In terms of you know where where does John Wick's loyalty lie and like who like has pledged fealty to which camp and all that. Sure, so, like, there's a lot of fealty pledging. In this yeah, movie. that is true. <laughs> um, and you know that's a kind of basic skin deep theme and the idea of family comes up a little bit with like where John Wick, John where he came from and his real name. Which I forget right now. Some Jordani, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, Jonovich. Jordani, yes. Jonovich. Oh my God! And wasn't and we'll get to that supporting mm-hmm. character. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think that they were going for some ideas of things here, but there wasn't. I don't know if there was enough for me to give anything a one. Don't fuck with people's dogs. <laughs> you think that's a theme, or that's just personal to you? I, Deep I, theme. It is personal to me, but. John Wick, Holly Berry. I mean, they were wearing, <laughs> their dogs were wearing Kevlar. Yeah. I knew you would appreciate that. Uh, you, Christopher Morgan, uh, for sure. But so, like, go the, on. The, the dog was fine, but she's still. <laughs> John's like, no, don't do it. And she's like, fuck, you shot my dog. I don't care if he's wearing Kevlar or not. You shot my but dog. But is that a theme? I guess I'm going to ask. You. Oh no, I, I don't think it's a theme. <laughs> I, I, I just kind of had right. to add it. All right, go ahead, Rich. Consequences. Pretty much everything. Everything that everybody has to do or has happened to them is because of some John, choice they made. Yeah, and it all starts with John giving. Con- they're paying the consequences to uh, was it Yuri? Was that his name? His son. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Fucking like, Jonathan. Yeah, like every everything that's led to everything that's happened spawned like from the this escalation. Decision. The escalation spawned from him deciding to kill John's dog. Mm-hmm. And everything that John does, the people that he asks to help him end up getting maul or mutilated. Like they end up getting <laughs> either left for dead, uh, I don't know, maimed. Yeah, yeah. they may maim good. Like, yeah, or uh, threatened to be fired and or killed or both. I don't know, man. Like this one's tough because I'm not saying it's like the void of themes, and neither were the other two. But also, like, is it the point, like? It's a very entertaining action film. Like you cut, you know what you're getting into when you see this kind of film, and especially this franchise. So, like, I do like that theme of consequences. Yeah, like it sort of calls back, and this is even plus again, they said each of them says it every single time. Like something right, goes like, wrong. Characters or, like, like they, Winston, Winston says it. John says it. The you're right. Yeah, they but, explicitly say that a number of times. You're right. A number of characters, but I still don't know if that's enough for me. Like it's it's tough because I'm not saying it's like devoid of it, or that, and that isn't there at all. But is it the point? Like, is it the message of the film, or is it just sort of like internal to the story of it? And that's the and that to me is like the problem with the last two films is because in the first film, there were there was a lot of pathos, and they they did return to this more than sure. they did to the last film. But that is the problem is like, it is such a rich world, and John Wick is such a rich character. But um, you know, I I just don't like when it when it 
you kind of lose those themes because you've got these big action set pieces. Um, that's I, I'm kind of trying to back your your yeah, thing no, up, right? It's, it's a little difficult. You here. lose the themes because you know the act because like in the first film, you know the action, everything was there's big periods of time without any action. There's a couple set sure. pieces. Really, it is not an action film. That first one, it has action elements in it. Um, so what, I, the first movie. Yeah, they, I mean, go they go are. watch. I've seen that film like five times. I mean, he's saying compared to like the, the next, yeah, to two and but, this one. But what I'm saying is that's why I'm I'm a, I'm coming uh, <clears throat> kind of on Scott's side because yeah, there's all these themes there, but are there are they being really carried through th- to the extent that they were like in the first film? Sure, like it's tough. Like yeah, like the idea of like family, like sacrifice, and, like dealing with their choices and like the repercussions, as you said, Rich. That is all like their surfacely as you said skin deep or something i think you just said sivo mm-hmm. i just don't know if like it's enough for me to give it the credit like because the intention to me seems to just be to have that there to keep the plot and the characters going along but without like exploring the deeper meaning of it per se so like it might be like a like a default like i'm not saying it sucked or anything or is bad or mishandled etc just that it might i might default to a zero just and just over the line even to that to that degree, yeah. For I think, themes, I think they're not super interested in doing any deep exploration of deeper themes mm. in this movie. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a zero. Yeah, it was gonna be close, but I just I feel like that's my again my gut reaction and my interpretation of it. So yeah, I'm I'm with what, you guys. Zero. I, I, I hate to say it, but like yeah, I get I, you. I'm kind of. I'm kind of, but there. I'm not opposed to like if if you want to give it a one, like that's fine yeah, too. I'm giving it a one. That, yeah. All right, Steve, zero for you on the mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Yeah, like again, like not bad, but just not enough for me. But anyway, let's move on to antagonist, and that shall be you, Chris. Uh this one, this one's kind of interesting because you can say the table is the antagonist. Mm. You could also say Rich's theme consequences is the antagonist. That, that's kind of like the, the I actually kind of like shipping that. To, mm, that's interesting. But see, I, I did. T- I wasn't. It wasn't that I wasn't listening. I was just like, you know, I'm going to move this over to. <laughs> Glad you were listening to us. <laughs> I was. Go on. Um, well, no, I'm, my whole point is, it's not like I disagreed with Rich, but I right. think if you move if you move consequences over from themes to antagonists, sure. yeah, sure. it's it still works. I mean, I understand it, but consequences is definitely. <clears throat> um, you know, it can be an antagonist. The table is like the mechanism, the yeah, the um, the 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 system, the the system in which these people live in. And, and they even said at one point, it's just like, dude, you were out, you know, and and um, <laughs> you know, it's just like it's so the system itself could be the antagonist. I mean, if you want to put a purse face on it, you could put the uh, not arbitrator. What the fuck? We're just talking adjudicator. About adjudicator. <laughs> Um, you could say that, but uh, I'm definitely going to say the table and or con- and consequences, and I'm going to give it a very strong one because mm-hmm. um, that is one thing that was that was a cloud always hanging over not just his uh, head but everybody's head sure. in part of this world. And like when Holly Berry was about to you know take revenge for her dog, he's like, "Don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it!" It's just like there's this interesting camaraderie between everybody there's always this gray area mm-hmm. and you get a sense that john's probably the most genuine holly berry's character is the second most genuine definitely Caron, um <laughs> lance Hendrick. La- lance reddick uh is definitely pro- you know well he seems uh, but it, I, I find it a very interesting dynamic th- this world and i find that you know I- i'm definitely giving this a very strong one hmm. interesting angle because rich and i uh just between us, we're discussing this. Like, if you're taking like, again, like uh, the fate, like a villainous face, or like a villainous character. Like, I don't think Zero was like he was okay, but not great. And like, I don't even remember the the actor who played the adjudicator. And she was again, she wasn't like trying to fight or kill John. Like, she was trying to get the others. She was. But trying, she was the face of the right, table. She was. Mm-hmm. She was enacting again, like the consequences thing. And that sort of tripped me up. Like, that's an interesting idea. That if we if we take away that as a theme and put it into antagonist it kind of stops in my tracks and make me think about it more to a degree and yeah like i don't know so originally like i said coming into it on the onset i was just thinking about it purely in terms of characters like who represents the antagonist and the enticing force and like again the you know the duels that he's having with these characters but 
it's ironically in the way that I often turn to a um you know a incorporeal element that maybe that is the case and yeah like perhaps it's I don't know deeper than it you might think of it or like seems to be on the surface like for a movie for a, a, a story like this but I do like I do like sort of switching it around here so now I'm kind of torn so well, the, I like to hear the, more the thing that was really smart that they did is that they gave the table the system a face in the adjudicator sure so and and then um Lawrence Fishburne's character is the face of the Undertale, and so I mean it's it was a really neat dynamic they put in there. So I mean that was basically the extent of it. I'm just saying yeah, that you. if you're going to take consequences and then you're going to say that there's a system, but you have now a face for the system, it's a bu- you've got the bureaucrat. Yeah. No, I was going to say the thing from I believe it's got like every time I try to come out, they they pull me back in. Yeah. But but I'd like to hear what what do you think, Steve, about all this? Yeah, I mean I, I was going to. Uh, say in terms of this that I think that the adjudicator is really the face of the table and really the one that brings the consequences that happen in this film and <coughs> kind of catalyzes mm. all the movement that mm. happens in the film. So I, I think that she's really the the um, sort of the main player behind the scenes yeah, almost. The, the, she, I, I look at that character as the antagonist and um it's done well i like we were talking about um what's his name zero the zero yeah the character and i was like he's not really an antagonist he's you know kind of just a he's like a wind up toy she winds yeah, him up yeah, a tool like, yeah, yeah exactly exactly and uh and he's he's good in that part but but she's really what um what drives it behind the scenes? Yeah, I guess we'll say. she's really what we, what we see as as the antagonist in this film. So I I, I like her as that. I'm probably going to give that a one. Okay. Yeah, I think I might take a cue. I think um, the credit I just took away from themes. I like I like all of your arguments, in fact, and like I think it's enough for me. Like I said, originally I was gonna the way I viewed it, I was gonna give it a zero. And as Rich and I, like I said, mentioned talking precast, but mm-hmm. in light of what we just said, having said all that, I think I will give it credit here on antagonist. What do you think, yeah, sir? Yeah, I was I'm still on the fence because it's it's hard for me to see, like, even though they have the adjudicator as the face of the table, it's not so much an antagonist so much as like, or a villain so much as like a force. Yeah, I, like I, I everybody, see what you mean everybody too, that's man. involved with the high table, like, does, like their own. They're only dangerous because people believe in the rules. Like there's a system mm. that's set forth that they have to, that they decide to follow. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like their show of power isn't really. It see it doesn't. It they never came across as power. Like everybody that stood against them, well, with like uh with the Bowery King, even though he got cut down pretty quick, but Winston was so confident that he could go to war with all of them. Mm. Mm. But it was very like, interesting that nobody killed her. Right. Also, like right. It, she at least commanded that respect. Much respect. That, yeah, was like, true. You know, at the end when he was like, "Nope, I'm not. I'm, we're going to war," and John was like, "Yep, I'm not going to kill him." Like, they could have easily killed her in that scene, and there was like that conscious choice there to let her walk out mm-hmm. because sure. of the respect that they had for the table, right? Or the like, the, the system at large. Yeah. I mean, Shit, I wonder what kind of. I wonder what kind of shit John would have gotten to if he killed. If he her. did that, <laughs> yeah. I mean, John, can it get any worse at this point? Oh yeah, maybe. <laughs> How? It's like everybody in the world is hunting him right now. <laughs> but I mean, really, she's she is the Hermes of the uh, underworld. Yeah. Mm. I mean, she's. I mean, that's I mean, why. That's, a, that's I, a good I, parallel. I mean, but, yeah. that, but I mean, it's a good she, parabellum. Parabellum. She's um, she she is the bureaucrat, which is why she's never she, directly oh, wow. involved. I, pre- in, I appreciate that they never shot the messenger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that, but that's my whole point is she is not the she's the face of yeah. sure a, she's not a warrior she's not a fighter she's like the face se. of the force let's put mm. it that way yeah. that's that's why I'm saying it's just like you do you can't consider her a direct antagonist as in somebody's going to pull a gun on you yeah but she is the puppet master sure or one of the puppet masters you know. True, yeah. and I. Where does it leave you? She's the IRS agent of the upper <laughs> table. <laughs> I mean, so I guess, like, you know, in terms of or 
perhaps we'll be waiting for the next fucking five John Wick movies before he actually fights against anybody who matters in the world. But in terms of this movie, she is as high up as he's going to get. And uh, she is definitely I would love it if strings. it turned out that everybody on the high table was like a b- bunch of John Wicks. <laughs> but I know that's not the case. No, yeah. yeah. It'd be cool, though. They're all just a bunch of badasses. Yeah. Like, uh, Ooh, that would be. Maybe that'll end with him taking a place at the high table. All right. Yeah. We're, it's not a, it's not a time, yeah. well, well, that, that, script that's time, time or place. Yeah. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my one that I gave to themes and move it over to antagonists. Okay. So you're making themes to zero? Yeah. Ooh, okay. So a switch. All right. Very nice. Interesting move, but I still like it. All right. So that shall bring me to protagonist, uh, Jean Wee himself, right? So. Jean Wee. I mean, like, again, like. <clears throat> It's difficult to uh, view it as like separate from the first two movies because, like, again, like when the first one was announced, like as a quick like little tangent, I was like, whatever, like another bullshit movie. Oh, Colonel's Colonel's an action movie, like it's gonna suck. And yet, like I was, you're right, Chris. I'll give you all the credit in the world. You're like, no, nah, man, it's it's better than you think. It's it's more it's more smartly done and, and so forth. And like I became a fan. I think we like Rich and I certainly became fans of this franchise. So yeah, it's Keanu Reeves playing like the most awesome assassin like hitman ever but i think like even so like you say what you want about him like there's all these jokes like you know the near like whoa and like whatever like all that stuff right i still think for what the script gives the character to be he is a good casting choice and does a yeah. good job and in fact like it's, he became more fleshed out as the franchise went on I think so what, the- what helps is that he always has so much pain and regret in his face and all of his actions. That's true. Yeah, he he's and not like, like he, you're right. He's not enjoying this no, shit. No, not at all. Like he's like most that like most action hero or most action movies will have like the main protagonist being awesome, killing a bunch of people, like puffing out their chest and just acting like, oh yeah, yeah, you're fucking you're awesome. Right. Like he doesn't want to do any of this. Right. Like he, all of his mm, fights are him mm, reluctantly yeah, killing people. Exactly. That's a very good point. Like he's he's like fourth again consequences. He's thrown into this situation, so like he's forced to use his skills. He's not like reveling in it or anything. He's like, uh, all right. Now uh, these motherfuckers case, come to kill me, so I point, guess I have most to kill him. Uh, at the beginning of most of the movies, it's always hit, er, when he runs into somebody that he actually knows, he always tries to talk him out of it. Yeah. Like uh, right. the big dude that he runs into in the library. He's like, yeah. Ernie, you really want to do this? It's like, I still got time left. Nobody will know. Yeah, you're right. And like, you're yeah. right. Even the, so like, as a quote, like, to the second one, I'm sorry, when Santino comes in, he's like, the Mark is like, no, take it back. Don't, like, we don't want to go down this road. Trust me. I don't want to do this. You don't want to do this. If you force me to, I guess I will, but I seriously don't want to do this right now. So that's a good point. I do like that. But that was a really nice juxtaposition with the Russian guy in the library. And I guess we'll get to this with secondary. Mm. And then the doctor, where he's just like, nobody's going to know. And the doctor's like, they're going to know. I even like recommend. They'll never believe I like stopped on the minute yeah. or whatever he said. But, but, but I mean, because obviously a doctor first do no harm. But. I, mean, I can't the, believe the adjudicator didn't go after him, by the way. Yeah. In the movie. Oh, like, that's true. They didn't actually that, show that, that repercussion. Been, I, I, mm. I feel like that was obvious, you know? Mm. like Fair enough. Uh, a good, I, actually, I didn't think about that, but now you mentioned it. It's a good point. Yeah. But no, I mean, like, yeah, Ken does a good job. I think, like, no, like giving his action history, like, filmatic history, and, like, just for who he is and, what the, again, what the script calls for this character to be, I think it's a good job portraying it. And it's it's believable. Like, yeah, he's the biggest badass in the world, but... He's not like embracing it to an extent. He he doesn't want to be that. He's just forced to, and I think it all works. Like it's sort of like that sort of juxtaposition melds itself pretty well. So I cannot give him a zero. And like yeah, you follow his journey, and it's fucking solid, man. Yeah. Not sure what else to say. Plus, we got to see where he came from. Yeah, exactly. Bit. And yeah, it builds up a bit more of his backstory. Like you know, like he was sort of mysterious in the first two. Like they didn't they didn't flesh it out all that well. Like they didn't give you that many hints. But as it went on, and I was wondering. I was always wondering, yeah. like, how he got involved with the Russians. And yeah, just like he was born into it. Yeah, and now, <laughs> and now you know, right? Yeah, so I think that was a very nice touch, and yeah, I'm gonna give it a, a pretty damn solid one. Yeah, I, I mean, I, he's a good protagonist. That's the reason that there's three John Wick movies. Right <laughs> well, that doesn't mean anything. There's a lot of crap out there that they keep making. You know, true, yeah. sure. But in this case, you're saying they're it's, making but... five Avatar movies. So, mm. oh god. Let's, yeah. mind let's, about that. let's not think about that. Sorry. Wow. But does that mean we're all giving uh, Jean Wee a one? Cameron can yeah. get five of anything. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, I'm definitely. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. What do you think, Stable? I'm, I'm going to give him one. It, it, it was it was a well done. It was a good a good third turn as uh, the the Wii. <laughs> yes. Very nice. All right. So let's move on to secondary, and that shall be you, Rich. Uh yeah. Like I, each movie always comes correct with the secondary characters mm. yep like they I agree. 
and I enjoy that they stay around for just as long as they need to. Like mm-hmm. nobody mm-hmm. ever, nobody overstays their <laughs> their welcome, and like they exit. And the everyone booth. dies yeah. except yeah. for Ian McShane. Yeah, <laughs> hmm? and and that's Reddick. <laughs> yeah, but no, like you're right. Like to build on that, yes, the world building in this one is, I think, the best because they've had they've now had the the time and the the previous history to do that. So yeah, like it's funny because I thought Halle Berry would be a bigger part of it. And, like she was perfect. Yeah, me she too. Was awesome. Like, I, like I, th- I was, uh, I thought that she was going. To, like you said, I thought she was going to be in more of the movie, but I'm glad that she was in the amount that she was. Yeah, in. you're right. They n- nobody was overused, and like I fucking love him. Like, 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 like they didn't, they didn't, for, like they didn't do like in most action movies where they like forced a reason for her to like travel with him. Yeah, like, like they weren't like buddied up the whole his, time. Like join, his, yeah. like join his bed. Like you would in another movie, you would expect her to be like yep. his partner. As I go back to Nick, she's like, "No, fuck you!" Like I did my, yeah. I did my job. Here you go. Now yeah. fuck off. Yeah. Fuck my entire life over. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, see you later. Can also, I, lo- I also love the fact that she gives him a "fuck you" at the end, where she like drinks his water, yeah. and spits it back out of the <laughs> bottle, and then hands it to him. It's like, "Fuck off, yeah. John." That's a great touch. And uh, see you never. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah like, and, like I mean, I always love Ian McShane, of course, in anything, and like I lo- like it just built it built upon itself. And yeah, everything else, like all the little like henchmen and stuff, like the you know the faces moves, like whatever, that's all fine. But certainly Halle Berry, and I'm so, I don't remember the guy's name. He plays Bron in Game of Thrones. Like yeah. he was Halle Berry's like former um like leader or uh, uh, owner of the manager yeah, yeah, yeah. of the um, Moroccan uh, Continental. Of course, Mark Mark Dacascos. Yeah, yeah, man, like Blanca. yeah. And uh, so like, again, like the world building itself and all the little, all the characters sprinkled through, and I just said like 100 percent agree. They never say they're welcome. They were never overused. They were just there just enough to to add something to the film, add something to the story, but without like distracting from it, I yeah, guess I'll there's say. There's always a reason for any one of them to be on screen at any time. Yeah, exactly. So I think Steve and I agree there's one person we wish he had more of. And that's the TikTok man, Jason Mazzucas. <laughs> yeah, sure. We wish we had a little more of him. All right, all right. I could have used him a few more lines from Jason. Yeah. Mazzucas. I'm actually surprised that he made it all the way to the end. I would say well, I mean, <laughs> Here's the. Th- I feel like anybody who talks too much is definitely gonna die in these movies, and they mm. didn't give him like any lines. <laughs> like, well, except for Sophia and I guess any of the really good assassins. Hey, Angelica mm. Houston, yeah. the director. Oh yeah, she had even. I was so excited to see her. She was wonderful. But same thing in the same vein of Holly Berry. Like she was used just enough, right? But not too much, and, and they didn't it made kill sense. Her and they stabbed. Oh, yeah. it's really ah. Yeah. So in yeah. series, she she come back even like if they yeah, make they more. They didn't even kill. Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, exactly. They yeah. thought he was dead. No. Yeah, and of course. Yeah, Lawrence <laughs> Fishburne is always I don't know good. If they thought he was dead because they said we're going to give you seven. Oh yeah, cuts. seven cuts. I, th- yeah. I think they they meant it as a punishment, and that's why he wasn't dead. Is because they were like, all right, you get yeah, seven but cuts, the... you get to live, but you're going to be fucked. I don't know, but I think the way when they gave him the seven cuts, like it looked like he the last cut like killed him. So like, it was somewhat yeah, so of a of slow course, roll. The movie wanted you, the audience, to sure. think he was dead, but I don't think that was the all right, point all right. of the punishment. Fair enough. But anyway, I feel like. It would be one of those things where they want to tie up loose ends because I feel like they realize he's a dangerous. Do you? Let me ask you this: with how fucking on point and thorough the table is, do you think they would have been like, "Yeah, we'll just, we'll just"? I assume he's dead. We'll just walk away. Do you think they're they're saying they knew exactly what they were doing? That's true because, like, (laughs) that's true because when they, she's like, "Hey, I just walked outside. John Wick's not there. What the fuck?" Yeah, exactly. (laughs) She immediately checked to see if he was dead. Yeah. No, fair enough. I mean, that's that's a that's a solid. Yeah, I was gonna say she would have put two in his brain and yeah. But yeah, regardless, I think like like you said, like they're all they're all used perfectly and they all did a great job as fulfilling their roles. Oh, and of course. uh, Sophia's two dogs. Yes, and yet yeah, th- sure, sure. And dogs dog. are solid. Yeah, they're and and, and oh, Keanu Reeves pit bull. Sorry, dog, dog the sure. pit bull, dog the pit bull, dog yes. the dog, dog the dog. <laughs> and that's actually Keanu Reeves rescued. No, yep. very nice dog. Well, bonus, but I, I believe that means we're giving it all a one card. See about what? I like to think that his middle name is the Bounty Hunter. Dog the Bounty Hunter. <laughs> Shut, dog. Stop it! Shut the uh, fuck up! <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> no, his last name is Pitbull. <laughs> dog dog the bounty hunter Pitbull. Yeah, <laughs> that's his full official name. The Pitbull dog. Uh, but it seems secondary one. Yes. Anything else to uh, add to no, that? No, no, no. Yeah, I, I think the secondary was good. I uh, hope we get more lines out of Jason Mendoza in the next yeah. movie because, as I mentioned to everybody earlier, I think he has one of the weirdest and best presences yeah. as like an actor. Right. He was a good inclusion. Working actor. And, uh, I, I love the fact because 
when I heard, I saw the the homeless guy, I'm like, oh god, that's an assassin. And then he comes out, he's like TikTok. I'm like, oh, Jason Manzukas. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know you got excited there. I know he. I love him. It's I want his, if he is an assassin. I want his fighting style to be as crazy as his. Fighting <laughs> <style>. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> would be amazing. I want him to be kind of like um, what's his name in in um, 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 into the Badlands. Uh, uh, Archie. Baji, I would like yeah. to, you know, to have some goofy fighting style. I want to say like, like he's like a drunken boxing, but it's like drunken knife fighting. I would like, <laughs> I would sure. like, yeah, I would like it to be either throwing knives or just like Molotov cocktails. Yeah, it's just like fucking that would be it. sweet. Just opens up a fucking coat. <laughs> yeah, explosive watches. <laughs> That's my suggestion. It's like, it's like one of those like old school like uh fucking time clock bombs. Yeah, yeah. Like exactly. Strapped to play bombs. Exactly. <laughs> If they do that, in, if they do that in the fourth, uh, John Wick, we called it. We called it here. Like somebody takes a swing at them, just like dee, 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 dee. they look down. It's like a bomb strapped to their chest. Yeah. He just runs off. Yeah. Hey, what time do you have? Okay, yeah. yeah, that would be fantastic. And if they do that, we called it. At some point, he gets a beak smashed on his face. Sure. Telegram but, uh, for Mongo. <laughs> that will be. Uh, <laughs> that will be one all around fucking scary. anvils on people. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Take it easy. So once for a second, here, though. So let's move on to... Uh, <laughs> Take note, writers. Yes. All right, Steve. I was, since you're speaking, uh, dialogue. Oh. The dialogue in this is uh, the same as all John Wick dialogue. It's very terse and to the point. And everybody is super hardcore and badass. <laughs> um, there are a couple of funny-ish lines that I will not remember tomorrow. Uh... I think the dialogue is okay at best. You guys will have to convince me if I'm going to give it a one. I'll all say right. that. I'll, I'll start. Understand. I'll start convincing you of a one. I think we might all add to Ian it. McShane? <sighs> well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> of course, Ian, Ian McShane gets a one no matter whatever question and whatever. Like, what He's I, the only reason yeah. I wanted to see yeah. the new make, remake of Hellboy. Yeah. So. Whatever angle Ian McShane is ever going to be in that we discuss again in one. But no, like, yes, you're right. It's terse. And like, it's not like fucking amazing. They're not doing Shakespeare here or anything like that. But in terms of the world, I think it all makes sense. And like, and again, it it may be because sure. if you're invested in the the franchise, that there are a number of callbacks dialogue wise to the first two. Something like some from one, some from two. So yeah, like again, if you, if you go into this movie sight unseen, you won't get that. It won't be as impactful or meaningful. But if you are invested, then I think it's a nice touch. And like, none of it was cringy. You know what I mean? Like, there's no eye rolling thing. It's like. He's gonna say what he's gonna say, and he's like, "I'm John Wick, and I'm fucking kill you." Like, whatever. Like, I don't uh, know, man. Like, it wasn't weak. It wasn't stilted. So, yes, Steve, oh, you're right. It's not like again the most flowery, poetic thing. Like, oh, it's amazing. Like, what what a great line. But it all makes sense to the world. And like, I'll give you this. My final, I guess, lead uh, argument is that Lawrence Fishburne like is basically chewing the scenery. Like mm. every time he's on screen, and like so. I think it's more people's delivery of the lines. So that adds to it. Like that elevates the lines themselves, like, you know, as read on paper, right. I guess. So no, but I, I was going to say my favorite parts of this movie were the talking parts. And again, not only did they have, get a lot of people who could deliver, who had great voices that you could just, that would lull you to sleep. Hmm. But the thing is the dialogue in there was no, seriously, you <laughs> listen to, I was going to say, was this also not an action movie? It means, <laughs> it means they, have, they have silky smooth delivery. No, we'll say. No, no, look at most of your action films, and the dialogue is like bravado. The characters are like really tinker toy. I mean, you know, um, but in in this film, I was invested in the dialogue. I mm. mean, they had um, <clears throat> they had a nice world. Everybody had their little take on the the uh, um, underworld gla- know, posh or whatever. Sure. Um, but what I'm saying is everybody delivered it well. I mean, like Angelica Houston, it was a very not, na- the dialogue was very naturalistic. And in these kinds of movies are, are just re- usually replete with one liners and usually have fall flat. And I mean, like, and it, it I, had that too. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, for this sure. Is a, this is a hyper real, this is a hyper reality, but except for like, you know, John Wick falling down at the end, you know, I, I there, you can buy into this because the, the characters are grounded because yes. the dialogue's grounded. That's well said. Because nobody comes off as a mustache twirling villain. Like I didn't want him to betray the head guy. Cause I'm like, he was so nice to him. All right. Yeah. He cut off his finger, but those are the rules of the, those are rules. Like, but he was, like, but he was very eloquent. But what I'm saying is there, there's this really, um, th- there's a, there's a thoughtfulness into the dialogue. The dialogue wasn't just to get from one fighting scene to the other. 
the dialogue really moved the story. I mean, it was that, really... but it also, I think, extended itself beyond that. So Yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely giving it a strong one. I thought it was great. Right. Um, Let me think, Rich. Yeah, I'm going to give it a one. All right. <laughs> okay. Well said in terms of dialogue. Strong uh, case for dialogue there. All right. So, so having said all that, what do you let think? Let me uh, let me talk it out to myself a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I Steve is going to talk out the dialogue part. There. Right. Am not sure that I have been convinced. That's cool. You don't have to be. But I made our points. Made our cases. Yeah, I think that the dialogue was. Perhaps all the things that you guys said it was. I don't disagree with any of your points, but I don't think that it was still not enough elevated by any means over. Um, perhaps it was. I guess. I guess probably part of the problem is that I hold a, like action movie dialogue in very low regard, except sure. for a couple of like really good movies, and. I don't think I think that this is better than a lot of the than the average of those, but that doesn't mean that much to me. No, no, I get so, you. So like I, I have it. to I have to like I'm trying to think of um good dialogue from this movie that really got me, you know, when I watched it literally earlier today and I can't think of any specific lines that like I really liked or like anything that really grabbed me. The only thing I can really think of are a couple of lines that were like kind of cheesy and like uh that's the first thing that pops into mind is like the i mean this isn't even a line of dialogue but where the guy shushes him in a library and like that type of stuff uh happens a couple times throughout the movie sure um but i don't remember like any parts that i was like oh this is like moving this is a moving piece of dialogue or any like anything like that so i'm gonna stick with a zero i think it was it was very close and you guys made good arguments but, That's completely fair. Um, All good. Zero. Alrighty. Well, given that, Chris, here's a big one. You get to speak about it first. The style. Um, first, uh, I would like to comp um, compliment Tyler Bates and the other guy who did the music with him. Uh, I thought the music this uh, whatever his name is. I know it's horrible. <laughs> I just looked it up before. I, um, uh, I thought the music was great. Uh, as always, the fighting choreography was wonderful. Um, but again, style wise, the, I didn't like the way they expanded, like, like the, like the continental was really the, that was the only thing like they, they moved the continental, like they, they had the whole glass room or mm. whatever, the whole, mm. I'm like, all right, you're straining some, um, whatever, but the con, you know, but I, I love the style, love the aesthetic okay. choices. Well, what about that bothered you? No, it's just like well, the first two movies that, they like that, made it no a bigger. Well, place they kind of made it this like kind of like a TARDIS technology or something. Like this is big. <laughs> well, like well, all they've really, know, all, they've, all they've ever shown was like the foyer in John's room before. Yeah, and the lounge. Like, but what yeah, I'm yeah, saying I is, it, I, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed the quaintness of it previously, but right. it's but a, it's still, a room hotel. but but still, <laughs> that was the only that was a minor complaint so, because yeah. I really I, I I really enjoyed the aesthetic choices. I thought. The desert scenes were incredibly well shot. Um, I that thought, was cool. Yeah, that was yeah, cinematography. Yeah, the um, you know, uh, but I I really love the, the part of the world that I love is like everything's got its own flavor. I love the the head of the table out in the desert. I, I thought his. I, I thought for this little ramshackle, it still had the eloquence mm. that all these other things did. I it's just it is such a rich world visually. I mean, removed from the fight choreography, and I'll let Rich and you guys speak to that. But I mean, the 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 style of these films, and as we said, like the Continental or in the bathhouses or whatever from the other ones, visually, just the production design in these things says so much. Hmm. And it, I have to give it a very strong one just on that alone. Sure. So I'll be brief. I'm going to somewhat push back. Like, and I think actually Rich mentions me, and I noticed it as well. I don't think the soundtrack like was as good as it was in two. Like it was fine, but what I remember listening to was like a, like a remix or just a, a reprise of like the John Wick like theme essentially, and that's it. Like in many scenes, whereas in two there are like a, a number of noticeable songs. Now maybe that was the framework, or, like the setting of the film. So I'm just saying to me the soundtrack was a bit weaker. But of course, if you say oh the, the choreography in a John Wick movie sucked, like then they failed at their job. Like yeah. 
they didn't do that. It looked great. The fights were amazing. Like seeing him like doing his fighting style and like you know the very various weapons and so forth that he used. And yeah, like the horses. Yeah, like yeah. yeah it, again, like yeah, he, John Wick killed the guy with a pencil, and then he killed the guy with a horse's ass. Like <laughs> it looked at all but looked great. So I'm saying, like, yeah, and you're right, like, the desert shit was really cool, like, the Casablanca, Morocco thing, like, th- that sequence was very well shot. So I have no complaints, and again, like, if, if you, if you notice a complaint in that, on that, in this front, then they've, they've failed, like, horribly, <laughs> but I don't think they did, and it, it was just as good as, as ever has been. Now, I will say that I did notice some kind of, here and there, some callbacks, like, references, visually, if you will, to one and two. I thought that was cool, but I still thought there were some scenes in two that I thought were cooler to a degree versus this one, and conversely, like vice versa. Some like it's hard to describe, but there were some cool things in this one that weren't present, of course, in two. But I think they're about equal. But regardless, the point is it comes out to be the same thing. That style is one of the strongest points. And again, if you if they fuck it up, like then you're like you're done. You should stop making these movies. But they did as good a job as if, <clears throat> excuse me, has have ever done, and that's fine. Just and again, as I mentioned, the only thing that was weak to me was the soundtrack. So, I'm giving it a one at the end of the day. I have to give credit to the choreographers for find continuing to find ways to make these mm. fight scenes like mind blowing, In, mm, interesting, unique, yeah. and, interesting, unique, and to like not have him murdering a bunch of people get old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. true. And like, I, I think it, I, yeah, I think it like the decision to have him without a gun a lot of the times in the mm. movie and force that him was to a nice be more, change yeah, up. Yep, to force him to be more creative, like definitely helped the film out in and the fight scenes. And as we were saying, precast the um, was it the thrift store or whatever the night yeah, with the, the antique, knife, the antique, the antique store. store. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, we got fucking ninjas. There is. I, <laughs> yeah. I feel like the, samurai. I feel yeah. like the writers of this are like. How can we fuck with the choreographers? Yeah. I was, like, <laughs> I was writing out a scene where you just like have to fucking have a throwing knife scene. You're like, how, <laughs> how can we give the choreographers something fun to do? You know, mm. like, we'll do that and then we'll fucking get this crazy ass fight scene where these two guys with knives like love John Wick and refuse to kill him. <laughs> and like, you know, like they have all this cool stuff. Like, and, and all of that's really good. Um, and I, th- I think that. A lot of it is like let's just. I think a lot of the, these things too are like all right. Let's pick like eight great set pieces. Yeah, and, and build, just it build a fucking movie around. It's like that. the Uncharted of uh, yeah. movies yeah. in a sense. Um, sure, and and they do a good job with that. Uh, I wanted to mention that the same thing as all you guys. The choreography is pretty damn great in this, especially like when they go out to the desert. Even the dog stuff. We didn't. I thought oh, you yeah. might go into more of that, but. Yeah. That was really cool. The, that was a, a I was, unique. I always love watching weapon almost. That's, watching dogs. Yeah. Fuck people. Like, <laughs> yeah. Especially if they're trained. Like this. Yeah. Like, I know this will probably never happen, but I always wanted a Batman movie at some point to have Ace the Bat Hound. <laughs> and like, think <laughs> this, this is the closest that we're ever going to get yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good call. It's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, I, and those, uh, I, I did kind of. Um, Leave that off my list as well. Like the dogs were great, the, and the choreography and the and the animal handling that had to go into that, I'm sure, was mm. crazy. But um, <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, in terms of specifically, in terms of the directing, the directing in the um, fight scenes, and how every hit feels very heavy in the way that they do this and it has a lot to do with the choreography but it also has a ton to do with the sound design mm-hmm. and the sound effects. Yeah, that's a fair point for <clears> sure. <throat> and they do a phenomenal job with the sound effects to the point where like it's so built into the framework of the movie that you don't I feel like it's it's hard to like separate the sound effects and 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 the sound from the fun, yeah. from the actual like cinematography itself and and from the visual look of the movie because it feels like it makes you feel it uh like viscerally yep. in terms of how it how it's happening like it makes it the punches and the kicks and whatever is going on look like they're happening harder you know mm-hmm. um and i think that that adds a lot these john wick yeah. movies have done a lot to push forward the way that you kind of feel the violence i guess <laughs> in Feel a hyper stylized. Yeah, like sort of violence, in, yeah. in the way that you like viscerally feel violence in movies, they do a fucking phenomenal job of 
making that um, something that is that you can almost like is part of your senses. It's like you palpable. Know, like, yeah. Just, yeah. Walk out of every John Wick viewing with a bloody nose and bruises all right. over your body. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> John Wick uh, 3 is a movie so intense it literally physically assaulted me So I'll, in the best way. I'll give it much credit for that and I think sure. the style um, all three of these movies is absolutely phenomenal. So I, all right. I hope to keep it going. Yeah. Well, Let's fucking a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, listen. As... Hey, wait, as long as it services the story, I don't want yes. them to like keep making John Wick films just to make John Wick. Films. Yes, and we're gonna have a big discussion about this uh, probably the off cast when we're yeah. done. But I agree with that sentiment in general. Yeah, I was gonna say we started having that last night. I'm like, yeah, they're gonna do this, and then they're gonna reboot it. And, you know, well, we'll see. We'll, we'll, hope... We of no, course. No, I hope not. I agree with you guys. I hope they, if they do one yeah. more, that they do it and end the story and don't release, run this. Or at least it. end John Wick's story and make a spinoff in the within the uh, universe there's like there's li- that's a whole no, fucking can of there's words like enough there's more <laughs> there's than enough, enough there, there. Uh, True. there's more than enough there i don't disagree with that but uh, as if this will be uh perhaps we might uh record this like afterwards and put it up later but style one for sure yeah and uh we'll see what they do afterwards we'll write it we'll write the script ourselves on air at some point but now that shall bring me to recommendation and yes i'm going to of course like i'm going to still book from uh luis Taranzo page a bit like with a little bit of a caveat like yes it's an enjoyable movie it's a great action flick that you can sit there for two hours and like have a great time with it if you're into it and if you are familiar and invested in the franchise previously then yeah you're gonna get a little bit more out of it just that if you're not then you might miss a few things it might not be as impactful or meaningful but yeah it's a, a better than that like even better better than average i'm not sure how to describe it like well beyond average action flick for sure and it's become one of my modern, enjoyable uh, action franchises, as I said. And so, yeah, I'm absolutely going to recommend it. It may not me may, may not be for everyone, but if you're into action movies, it's some of the best stuff. Like we said, choreography, a lot, all that that goes along with it. So, yeah, I'm gonna give it a solid one on recommendation. I'm definitely gonna recommend it. Like it, I recommend the John Wick movies to anybody who like even has a passing interest in action mm. movies. Especially for the choreography, yeah, because yeah. you have people reloading, which <laughs> yeah. you never see. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> it's a very nice touch. I'm like, yeah, you, you're right. It's sort of like it's grounded. It's hyper realized, but also a, grounded in that I sense. Yeah, I, I love the one that scene that where, where everybody's got it, was trying to look quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're all grabbing each hilarious. other's clips. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they don't do the reloading more in action movies because I, I guess they're like we we don't have time for this shit. But it adds so much it adds tension. So much say. tension. Yeah. That's exactly what I was right? going to say. Exactly. Yeah, everybody's got like a hundred round clips, you know. And sure. Like, and to be honest, they might push the envelope a little bit on the uh, clips in this one. Too, sure, but, but like, still. But they, there is like constant reloading going on, and it gives you mm-hmm. a moment to be like, "Oh shit, what's gonna happen? Is he gonna get fucking shot?" I mean, obviously not. <laughs> but like, sure, you know, it's 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 it is a tension builder. Um, well, he gets shot. It's just he's always wearing body armor. <laughs> I was I was trying to decide uh, if this being the third one is the barrier to entry or not, and. To be honest, I think you could w- watch just this one and be fine. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, it, it, it's not. Yeah, maybe you'll so be like. You basically. It, maybe you'll be like, for a half a second, be like, what's going on? And you'll be like, oh, there's. Uh, I see what's going on. A lot of people are getting fucking shot in the face. <laughs> also, like, they do a good job of like, talk, reiterating what happened in the second film. Yeah. And honestly, if you're going there to see. If you've seen the third one before any of the others, pretty much whoever you went to see it with could fill you in. While you're waiting in line to get popcorn. Yeah. It's like, so first movie, dude killed his dog. He got revenge. Then <laughs> she dipped his toe back in there. That shit got more real. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody else brought him back into the fold, and then he ended up having to kill them. Yeah. And even in theory, this movie does it. Like, if you remember Zero, it was like, oh, yeah, I heard about John Wick. Uh, it was something about a dog and a car, and uh, now... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, right. And realize, in the universe, this is like, what, a week now? Yeah. Two weeks. It's been two weeks, two weeks two tops. Yeah, two weeks, two and a half weeks. Yeah. However long it took him to go from, like... With to Rome and then back, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, like and just, then to Casablanca, then. yeah, just, just <laughs> yeah. like just like a small caveat, but still, it's totally enjoyable, and I definitely recommend it. And by and large, honestly, this dude needs a nap. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen John Wick eat that's anything. A, that's by what the I was way. gonna say. I don't think I've seen him eat. <laughs> I, I don't think I even see. Uh, you never even saw him drink Holly Berry's, you know, backwashed water. He doesn't drink it. I think he just like drops because yeah. at some point he falls yeah. on the ground. Yeah, he's passing out in the desert, sure. like, fucking 
you know, cap first into the. I love the disrespect that everybody shows his unconscious body. Like, did you notice how many times <laughs> yeah, he, he just got dumped. thrown, dumped yeah. off of shit? <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Yeah, that's the only time you can disrespect John Wick. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, Wick. otherwise he's gonna kill you. That's your one chance you get. You get when he's passed out, when he's unconscious. All right. So, any any final thoughts before I hand out the scores? Going to show up a month later. No. I know you kicked me. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Back for revenge. I knew it in the back of my mind. All right. Yeah. So let's see how it breaks down. Um, Rich, you have given it a nine. Uh, me and Chris and I, that is, have given it an eight. And Steve, we gave it a seven, which gives us an eight overall, mm-hmm. which is perfectly like yeah. I think that stands. It's it's a, again way better beyond the bar average action movie and franchise. And I'm invested in it at this point. And Yes, it'd be nice if they make maybe one more would be great, two more stretching it, but regardless, John Wick 3, Power Bomb, as good as it's ever been, and it's totally worth it. Sure. So any final thoughts upon that, my friends? No, let's all go. Let's all go on an assassination spree. (laughs) I have been Scott Thurlow. Uh, I do not advocate for that. (laughs) I don't have anything. The high table is calling me right now. (laughs) I've been Scott Thurlow, and I've been here with Rich Perry. Consequences. (laughs) And Stephen Amosi. Forget it, Wick. It's Casablanca. Nice. (laughs) And Chris Morgan. Good night. And we'll see you next time. Cheers. Editing and engineering by Christopher Morgan. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows. And on Facebook and Twitter for updates. Or mods?